Soundsing Tin Media. It is July 16th, 1995, in the woods of northwest Arkansas, in a place called Tanyard Creek. A boy is found wandering, confused and alone. He's taken to the hospital, where, luckily, he can remember who he is. My name is Chad, he keeps saying, over and over, to the nurses and doctors who examine him. He has only minor injuries, but he also has this dazed, unsettled look about him that makes everyone at the hospital uneasy. Someone asks him, for what must be the hundredth time, what happened out there? It mimicked our voices, and then it took my friends. What took his friends, exactly? According to this story, the thing that Chad would go on to describe is dozens of feet tall and skeleton-like. It can blend into the trees, and instead of a head, it has two speakers that play odd sounds. Have you heard of this monster? I'm Elise Parisian, and we'll hear much more about the beast called Siren Head on this episode of Unspookable. What makes a monster scary to you? What characteristics do you imagine would be the creepiest to encounter? Do you think of teeth first? Speed? Agility? Brain power? Are creatures more scary if they're similar to animals, like a werewolf? Or if they're humanoid, like a vampire? When it comes to being creeped out, does your imagination take the form of Things you've already seen? Things that already have some inspiration from shows or books or movies or games? What would it take for something freaky to be completely new to you? To be like nothing you've ever seen? That's the feeling that many people describe when they first see the cryptid known as Siren Head. It's so unsettling, partially because it feels so different. Siren Head is described as 40 feet tall, about the size of a telephone pole. It's skeleton-like, with mummified skin, the color of rusty metal stretched over its bones, and arms that reach almost to the ground. The torso of the creature has wires embedded in it, running upwards to possibly the most incredible feature of Siren Head. In the place of any type of humanoid skull, it instead has two speakers, which can play strange music and other sounds, and rotate around its neck, the way you might see an owl move its head. A very skilled predator, Siren Head is said to remain motionless in wooded areas or on country roads for days, blending into the landscape until convenient prey happens by. How does it eat, you might wonder? Well, it is said that inside the recesses of each speaker are rounded mouths with rows and rows of sharp teeth. So where did this novel cryptid come from? Siren Head is the ingenious creation of Trevor Henderson, a writer and illustrator based in Toronto, Canada, who loves all things monsters, cryptids, ghosts, and as he describes it, other horrible entities. In 2018, Henderson released an illustration of Siren Head with a short fragment of a spooky story, only a paragraph long, really, but it was enough for the internet to go wild. Like so many tales before it, including Slenderman and Momo, which if you haven't had a chance to listen to those episodes of Unspookable, go check them out. Siren Head is completely the creation of an imaginative artist. Its mythology is so recent, but got so widespread because of the ability of social media, blogs, and other sites to quickly share and expand on information. Unlike the idea of a witch, a ghost, 
or even a dragon. Siren Head is a very new monster. A baby, really. But in a few short years of existence, Siren Head blossomed into an untold number of stories and illustrations, and then a few video games and short films. So what do we find so alluring about this giant terror? We'll explore that question when we return. I've heard of Siren Head a lot through my brother or YouTube, at like at all, just on the home like, page. And I've, like, the best way to describe Siren Head is kind of a tall alien looking thing with two alarms on its head that, or, well, four ahead, that look like school bells. He is supposed to look like this giant, like, like, I would say scry- skyscraper thing, which looks like it has, a, like, ba- literally a siren for a head. It's just, like, this giant, thin, creepy, like, s- giant stick thing monster. Um, I don't know what it does, though. I don't actually know what it does. I've heard of Siren Head through TikTok and a few of my friends, and the best way I would describe Siren Head is is he looks like two tornado sirens stacked on top of each other. I've seen a lot of games like mentioned on YouTube, like Minecraft mods um, that have Siren Head in them. I know of Siren Head a lot from also Roblox because there's games like Escape Siren Head. What if it isn't just Siren Head's chilling appearance that ramps up our feelings of fear, but the sounds it makes? Could there be a biological reason behind why this creepy cryptid makes our skin crawl and puts us into a heightened state of excitement? Think for a minute about these sounds. Wailing police and ambulance sirens. Screeching car and fire alarms. The shrill, jarring beeps that come before an emergency broadcast on the radio and on our televisions. What feelings do those stir up inside your head and in your body? Do you start to feel the urge to run or to hide? Does your stomach start to hurt? Or do you suddenly feel like you're going to throw up or pass out? All of these reactions are totally normal. This is because our brains are super sensitive to auditory or noise-based stimulation. According to neurologists, scientists and doctors who study the human brain, the frequency or the pitch of sounds, also known as hertz, have a direct impact on how our brains and bodies react. Sounds with a higher frequency that repeat rapidly, like the human screams, blaring alarms, and whooping sirens that Siren Head emits, trigger our fight or flight responses. They actually even light up areas that aren't even necessarily associated with how our brains process sound. The amygdala, insula, and hippocampus are three of these areas. Can you guess what they're responsible for? Feelings of pain, anxiety, and fear. But that's not all. Siren Head's infamous assortment of auditory terrors are also considered non-linear sounds. Have you ever watched any of the Jurassic Park movies or seen a nature documentary with a hissing alligator or a roaring lion? How did you feel when those creatures appeared on screen? Excited? Disturbed? Panicked? The noises made by the fictional rampaging dinosaurs and the very real wild animals on our planet are non-linear. They have irregular sound waves, and to our brains, Their frequencies feel all wrong. They're unpredictable. The instincts that we're hardwired with, the ones that allowed our ancestors to survive billions of years ago, mean that we react instantly to these unusual nonlinear sounds. Scientists have found that they're even more powerful than images. That's why some of us are just fine looking at a picture of a tiger, but when we hear their deep, throaty growls, we suddenly want to run for our lives. But Siren Head hits the perfect balance between the two, with its striking appearance 
and nightmarish noises it makes when brought to life in video games or on platforms like YouTube. I don't think Siren Head's real because it's one of those things where it's like you have to see it to believe it. And there's like, I live in a state where it's un- like a known enough thing where people talk about it here. And I feel like it's something that you definitely have to see to believe. And it's kind of like mermaids. If you see a video, it's not really enough proof. I don't think Siren Head is real because I feel like Siren Head would be way too big and you'd be able to see him from almost anywhere and there would be a loud siren and that has never actually had video proof of it. No, I don't actually think he's real. I think it's just a social media thing, basically. Siren Head's ominous blend of machinery, human elements, and panic-stoking noises aren't the only things that draw us in to this creature's thrall. It's the tantalizing legends and lore, all from an ever-evolving internet mythology that grows richer and more complex by the day, that continues to grab hold of the imaginations of lovers of all things spooky. As with Slenderman, Siren Head started off as a monster dreamed up by just one person. Like the instant popularity of Victor Surge's something awful contest winning creation, Slenderman, Siren Head 2 was quickly embraced by millions of horror lovers online. Many of them only too eager to have a hand in drawing from the creature's eerie appearance to build up a backstory or a history for it. Because of that, much of this modern monster's mythology is just a click away. Siren Head, described by creator Trevor Henderson as the patron saint of going missing without a trace, of creeping dread, of bad things coming. Trevor's Twitter is home to an entire thread of Siren Head lore titled Everything Canon About Siren Head. Taking a scroll stroll down the Twitter thread is a fully immersive and interactive experience. It almost puts you in the shoes of a character in a horror movie who begins to investigate the odd things happening around them, only to discover a whole montage's worth of a stack of evidence. On Trevor's siren head thread, grainy Polaroid photos, screenshots of security camera footage, hand-drawn sketches, and typewritten eyewitness accounts appear one after the other each more exciting and more haunting than the next. One entry reads, 1978. Nine-year-old Catherine Hubbins goes missing from her home after she hears strange noises coming from the woods across from her family's backyard. Her little sister, Abby, said Catherine heard their mother calling to her from the trees. But in Abby's words, the voice was wrong It was all echoey. Another is a blurry photo of Siren Head, attempting to blend in amongst a row of trees, accompanied by the text, photo recovered from an abandoned cell phone by father and son hikers in Yellowstone National Park, July 14th, 2016. Could it be these stories that drive us to seek out more of this monster? Or could it be that the moment we leap into these terrifying tales on Twitter threads and beyond, that we become a part of the story? With every like, share, comment, and DM, we take a step further into Siren Head's universe, even if we don't mean to. Siren Head's world building isn't only happening around us, but also because of us. We have a hand in adding more to the lore. And in some cases, the line between fact and fiction blur. I think another thing that's similar to Siren Head that's like scared people with videos or off TikTok or off YouTube is Momo, because that was a really big thing that went around that scared a lot of people. It's really important to research things on the internet, like 
I've done some research on things because just like when I was younger, I used to get scared a lot from things that you'd find on YouTube or like other social media apps. Those things when people like especially the people around you, if you see it in two places like your friends and the Internet, then it can really scare you. Um, I think it's important to do extra re- research because sometimes they're not true and like they're just supposed to like make you think something or do something. So by doing extra research, you can get to know if it's really real or not true or just something fake. I think it's important to do research so you're not over scaring yourself and you can reassure yourself that something's fake and so that you're not continuing to spread rumors. If you fire up YouTube and do a quick search for Siren Head, dozens of clips and videos with titles like 10 Siren Head Sightings Caught on Tape, Top 5 Mysterious Siren Head Monster Sightings, and Siren Head is Coming for You appear one after the other. Each headline seems more dramatic and terrifying than the next. By the sheer volume of these videos alone, it would be hard denying that Siren Head might just be out there, lurking in the woods or the backcountry roads. After all, who of us hasn't heard unexplained noises that seem to come out of thin air only to vanish, or had the creeping sensation that something out there is watching our every move? But are any of these sightings real? We need to step back for just a minute and ask ourselves, who made and posted these videos? And why? Are they historians? Journalists? Professors at well-respected schools and universities? Or are the people behind these true Siren Head sightings famous internet personalities like popular YouTube gamers? or amateur filmmakers making hobby videos, or pop culture horror websites and magazines getting ready for their Halloween editions, or even teens and kids who are just really into the creepy lore behind this cryptid. How about all of the above? Since Siren Head was launched into the media spotlight by scary game lover and prolific YouTuber Mark Fishbach, also known as Markiplier, it has continued to be the subject of speculation. While Markiplier's video was just a recording of him playing a Siren Head video game and excitedly talking about how he never knew the game existed, many audience members see that video's 5.3 million views as further validation of the creature's existence. But really, if we were to look at the history, as well as the creator's own words, there's never been a shadow of a doubt that Siren Head is a work of fiction. The excitement that Trevor Henderson has stirred up in the art and writing community has made Siren Head an icon, the star of his own horror movie, really, that lives across mediums and platforms and in the imaginations of its fans. It's the power of special effects and the tabloid-like headlines that make these videos continue to capture our attention. It's interactive storytelling that feeds into our imaginations, and it's the mysterious mythology of a monster birthed from a combination of humanity and machinery that keeps us coming back for more, and makes us want to question, could Siren Head really be out there? It's the mark of what might just be one of the most phenomenal fictional creations of the generation. Thanks for listening to Unspookable. I'm your host, Elise Parisian. This episode was written by Eleanor Riley Condit and Victoria Thomas. Research done by Michael Grafwall. Produced and edited by Nate Dufort. Our theme song and additional music composed by Jesse Case. Our logo was created by Natalie Kewen. Special thanks this week to our guests Blythe, Bella, and Al. If you enjoy the show, make sure to tell your friends. You can leave us a rating and review in your podcast player of choice 
or share an episode on social media. Speaking of social media, you can find Unspookable on Twitter and Instagram. Follow us for a peek behind the scenes and for updates on the show. Unspookable is a production of Soundsington Media, committed to making quality programming for young audiences and the young at heart. For more information on our shows and the people behind them, go to www.soundsingtonmedia.com. 